Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to take virtualization to the extreme and do something which I don't think has, uh, as far as I know, has been accomplished so far. Uh, which is we're going to take um, our uh, beloved uh, mainframe operating systems and run them on top of six uh, different layers of operating systems, five layers of virtualization, and still get very, very decent performance. And that's only possible because we're going to be working on a real iron mainframe. So, uh, as you can see here today, we're going to take my, we're going to, we're going to uh, enjoy a little bit of mainframe virtualization madness. I don't think it's possible to do what we're going to do on uh, on the Intel architecture um, for various reasons. I'll, we'll get we'll get to those reasons during this video. But uh, what we're what we're dealing with is um, there is a mainframe at the University of Leipzig in Germany, in <coughs> I'm sorry, in Central Europe, and uh, at the University of Leipzig. Let me enable here the. Uh, the laser pointer. Uh, the University of Leipzig has a data center and in there is this uh, a mainframe. This is an IBM Z114 uh, data center um, made built around 2014 and I know that this mainframe has 128 gigabyte of RAM and five CPUs, five uh, main CPUs and then as much storage as needed because the storage of course is uh, nowadays in a different storage subsystem and uh, you can just add this as much as you need uh, you don't attach individual dasties uh, to a mainframe anymore and so with this machine we're going to see is that we're going to have this uh, russian uh, matryoshka dolls uh, whereas we run uh, we're going to run nvs 3.8 ultimately a 24-bit operating system uh, but we we're going to go through several layers of virtualization five layers of virtualization to run MBS 3.8 and uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun doing that and uh, to explain a little bit better what it is we're going to do I made this final slide here so I can explain so we have the um, IBM Z114 mainframe that we just saw in the picture before uh, this is wrong here it should be 128 gigabytes of RAM five CPUs as we said and on top of that um, there's going to be an LPAR LPAR in IBM is means logical partitioning and how does IBM partition a mainframe because obviously you still only have five CPUs and uh, you still only have the RAM and so the way that IBM ever since they introduced the prism architecture which is the underlying technology uh, that that enables uh, LPAR partitioning uh, there is really just a ZVM hypervisor um, in the firmware many people don't know that but LPAR is just ZVM um, in the in the firmware and uh, this is also uh, some people know that for instance uh, the error messages you would get from LPAR for a long long time were the exact same ones as uh, ZVM and uh, and so yeah so we basically you're running already a software there on top of the IBM Z114 and we're not going to talk at all about the fact that the Z IBM Z architecture is emulated by PowerPC so technically there's another emulation layer in there but this is so you know so deep down on the and so close to the processor the power pc processor we're not going to talk about that at all and just ignore it here for the for the purposes of this video but so you have the lpa which is a hypm uh, zvm hypervisor on top of that then at the at this uh, installation at the university of leipzig they have the zvm hypervisor which um, which is the hypervisor they use to um, easily manage linux instances you can also run linux directly on top of an lpar you cannot run directly on a Z114 without the LPAR, but I think as of um, probably Z9, you cannot run an IBM mainframe without partitioning anymore. You have to you have to enable partition. So then they have the ZVM 5.4 hypervisor. Why do they have such an old version? I think it's because also it's a slightly older version of the mainframe, and uh, maybe um, Z61, uh, which would be the next uh, newer version of this hypervisor, needs a newer machine than the Z114. So um, so on top of that, they have um, on top of this partition, they have the ZVM hypervisor. And then, of course, then they have several Z Linux instances. I'm given, I was given one to play with, uh, which is a Z Linux with two CPUs and four gigabytes of memory. And here comes the the fun, the fun stuff that we're going to do today. All this is standard, right? This is what the university gave me to play with. 
So uh, this four layers just come if you get Linux on uh, on the mainframe nowadays, uh, pretty standard. What we're going to do is, of course, run now Hercules as an additional emulation layer, an additional operating system layer on top of uh, Z Linux, and uh, which, of course, since we're only playing with 24-bit um, operating systems, can only really address 16 megabytes of RAM. Hercules, of course, itself can address many gigabytes of of RAM, but if you enable 24-bit, it can only seat 16 megabytes. So on top of that, now that's the funny part. And so we have a previous video where I showed, where I was showing how to run MVS 3.8 on top of Hercules, on top of Zilinux, on top of ZVM, on top of the partitioning, on a, on the on the very same University of Leipzig Z114. However, the innovation we're going to do in this video is. Oh, we're going to run the IBM VM370 hypervisor. So we're going to run the grand, grand, grandfather of this hypervisor here. Uh, we're going to run on top of Hercules. And then on top of that, finally, we run MBS 3.8 as a guest virtual machine of the VM370 hypervisor, which runs on top of Hercules, which itself is uh, uh, an emulation running on Linux, which is a guest of ZVM, which itself is a guest of the LPAR partitioning of Prism, which runs on the real hardware. So um, this is what we're going to do today. I, I, I don't know if this has ever been done on the Intel architecture. It's kind of hard to believe that the you would see any any anything that uh, response time that humans would have fun with maybe it's been done or not i haven't seen any videos any i've searched any any mailing posts or anything any emails about it but so this is what we're going to do today um so we're going to have five virtualization layers one uh two uh three four five and then six operating system layers and at the end of all this you'll see that mbs 3.8 feels faster um, here, then you would have on your typical Intel i3 processor from the, from you know when you would you would go and buy from uh, from your PC store or Best Buy or something like that. So this is what we're going to do today. Um, of course, for the hypervisor, we're going to use six pack because that's what we've been uh, working with and playing with, especially on the Moshix uh, uh, mainframe in the cloud. And then uh, yes, I guess we're going to use just the TK4 update eight. From Jurgen Winkelmann, and uh, everything else here is just standard components. We're only going to be seeing really this because we don't get to see the ZVM. I have an access to the ZVM because the University of Leipzig has granted me a user on this machine. I don't get to see this at all because you need to be on the mainframe, the physical mainframe, on the console to play with this. And I've never actually seen this uh, machine myself. I, I think I'm going to go to Leipzig. Uh, hopefully in the next few months and get to see and, and touch this machine but um, I, I only have photos from the internet and uh, and this is the standard components we already have on the Moshix made from in the in the cloud so and Hercules we already installed in the previous video when I showed how to get MBS directly to run on top of Hercules so there's no reason why all any of this wouldn't work the real question is how responsive is it and what's the performance and how easy to get it to run since this is all different than an intel architecture it's it's a, the ibm mainframe instruction set um but this is all hidden from us the real question is how responsive is this mbs going to be um running under on top of so many layers of software so why don't we get to it um so what i've done here is let me uh, make this a little bit easier. So I uploaded the six pack, which the exact same six pack we have on the main on the Moshix mainframe in the cloud. I've uh, uploaded to the uh, to this Z Linux instance on at the University of Leipzig uh, mainframe. Um, so I'm logged in. So if if I uh, look at the configuration file for this VM 370, which is by the way the six pack. One dot version one dot two with the all the diagnostic and the full screen editor installed, the Metcalf tools. Yeah, I have the console port thirty two eighty uh, because that's what I use on the on the Moshix mainframe in the cloud. But I want to use thirty two seventy here for firewall reasons. Um, so this now should just basically just work. Um, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work. So why don't you just try it? We don't need to put in minus F because if you don't specify, if you have Hercules.cnf in the directory, Hercules will automatically pick that one as a configuration file. So I, I haven't done this yet, but let's just try it. 
Okay, so it sees the MVS 3.8 um, files, the DASD files. Start all. Enable all. And now, yeah, um, yes, a VM 3.7 is now up. Let's try to connect. Yes. So you can see here we're connected to that. Uh, we just got the notification here from Client Hercules that client device connected. So I should be able now to just say Okay, so we are in here now. We need, just need to IPL um, MBS, as far as I can see here. So um, let's switch here to this view so we can see the processor working. And I'm going to make this just a tiny a little bit smaller because you should see then this, um, especially this, because we're going to IPL from the MBS resident uh, volume. So we should see some activity here. This should turn yellow the moment we start to IPL. So let's just do it. Um, we, we need to IPL from 148. So maybe we just add some more um, sessions we can dial into the same virtual machine. So we can have potentially uh, uh, console screens for this. And I never know to which one uh, the console goes, so I always uh, start a few consoles. Dial into it, make them small, so they don't occupy a lot of space. And we should see some activity here pretty soon if I IPL. The MIPS counter and the start IOs per second and then CPU. And then here, the activity on device 148. So why don't we just try this? Um, we start with command equals zero three means no automated IPL. We do everything manually. Okay, so you can see here there's some activity here on this side. Hard code console unavailable respect. Okay, so we're just gonna say um, that all commands should go to this console. Okay, so this is now coming up. It's doing something. And I don't know what we're waiting for. Maybe one more console. Okay, let's see what the status here is. Okay, so this seems to be up. Um, MBS is up now. We just need to start uh, JS2, the job, um, the job entry subsystem. So far, so good. Uh, JS2. And it wants to specify options. We say no requests, no rec. Okay, so this has come up. Um, so we can just clear, close this one. I don't think we need this one. Let's just leave one open because the console is apparently going to this uh, to this session here. So yeah, so JS2 is up. Let's show active jobs and yeah. So this is the answer from uh, from JS2. And if I do this i will see that uh, jest2 is now running so now we need to start vtam so we can have access to to count to monitors the vtam um network uh subsystem started through a, a procedure called net in this in this case yep and you can see here the cpu other yes and now we have the screens available so all the ones that dial into this virtual machine are now able to get the log on screen from TK4. Um, and so there's really, so this is still VTAM coming up. Um, we can also <coughs> start MF1 for the 
SMF reporting. And then you should see it running here. Yeah. And um, you can also start JRP. Yes. So I think so far so good. Um, we have we have the system running now. We can make this one smaller because this is the console, and uh, it's not that important anymore. And now let's start using MVS. So this is now the center of our attention. If you want to see some activity on the DASDs, you can see it here and the CPU. So let's log in. Uh, this is uh, the image that I a backup image of the MBS mainframe that I have in the in the cloud for users so um, it, it knows my passwords for the privileged users etc so I'm gonna do that whoops oh we need to start TSO sorry about that um, so uh, we don't have TSO running so that's why application is inactive it's actually correct so we need to start TSO and now TSO is initialized. So now we can say uh, I'll have zero one. Yes. And now TSO wants my password, which you recognize. And today is November third. Okay, so this works. And uh, we can go in here, and we now have MVS running and uh, performance is very acceptable let's go and run something uh, 3.4 jcl lib let's run some pl1 shall we uh, perfect let's run it you can see here the cpu is up to 21 mips i mean this is what i get out of an i3 um, sorry to say, but <laughs> my old uh, 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 Intel i3 processor PCs are not much faster than this. Um, it's certainly faster than a than a uh, Raspberry. And if you consider how many layers we're running here, so let's go look at the output. And look, let's look at this. So this finished in, well, in three seconds. Yeah, three, three seconds, almost four seconds wall time. Uh, see, three seconds CPU time. So very respectable. Um, we're running now here a OS 360 compiler from a 60 year, almost 60 year old compiler uh, on a modern mainframe. I mean, how about that? Running a 60 year old compiler on a four year old mainframe uh, both IBM, everything is IBM here that we're looking at. Works perfectly. Found a bunch of uh, prime numbers. Um, and as you can see here, very responsive. No problems whatsoever. I don't know how many prime numbers we looked at. Let's uh, see. Let's go to the bottom. Oh, we look for how many is this? For 1 million prime numbers. Uh, prime numbers up to 1 million. And so all this in three seconds. And um, I think this is very respectable. I mean, if you if you remember that we're really running here, um, this MVS is run, running here uh, under VM370 on top of Hercules, which is emulating a mainframe again, the whole mainframe, inside Linux on top of ZVM, inside a ZVM partition on the uh, IBM mainframe. I mean, I don't know, this is just amazing. Um, I don't know if, if that will be achievable on if you could do that on on any Intel server or any other server that I know of. This is just to me. This is just mind blowing. I mean, this is why I love this stuff. This mainframe it just works. Things just work, and they they're predictive. They, they either work for a good reason or they don't work for a good reason. And the the stuff that you can see nowadays in the Windows world, when people they launch it one time, it doesn't work. They launch it a second time, and then it works. And nobody can explain why that that is just a windows thing and uh it, it didn't exist ever in the mainframe world and still doesn't exist today it either runs because it needs to or it doesn't run because there's a good reason why it couldn't run or shouldn't run and uh, and there's nothing in between and that's that's the reason 
uh, why you could have six layers here of operating systems, one on top of each other. The other reason is that there's the very extensive documentation I've been produced, especially in the beginning. I mean, nowadays documentation is not as, it's just not, it's not the same IBM anymore as it used to be, but um, for 40 years, IBM produced excellent, excellent documentation, documented everything, and you could always rely on the documentation. Still to this day, I mean, it's still much better than anything else, but it has gone down a little bit, let me just put it this way, but still respect to IBM and all the people at IBM, all the engineers, what they produced here is just, it's just stunning. Um, I mean, this is just unbelievable. We're running here six layers of operating systems and uh, with very decent performance and very reliable. I can now lift this up and running and it would stay up and running for months without ever going, without ever going down uh, because the reliability is just, it's just amazing. And I will, and I will keep this running as long as the University of Leipzig uh, lets this run. And uh, I think we can mark this down as a first, um, having all these layers of uh, IBM software going from uh, 2018 all the way back to the early uh, 70s or even to the 60s, if you look at this compiler here. Um, so we're running a 60-year-old compiler here. And uh, so we have here 60 years of software stacked on top of each other and just working beautifully without one single complaint. To me, this is just mind bending. Uh, it's just beautiful. I, I can look at this stuff all day long. I mean, I'm amazed. And I don't know if, if you're not amazed, then, then you probably don't realize what we're doing here. But I think those people who, who understand what we just did are gonna be amazed. And I hope IBM is watching because because this should be amazing to you folks too. I mean, you guys made all this and all your generations of engineers working on this stuff have created something amazing. I mean, this is this is just amazing engineering. And <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm going overboard here because I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just happy. And uh, all this works. And I can now uh, log in here, um, start a new session. Yep. And I can dial into CP Watch, and we can now watch the session here. Um, if we go in here, we see we are emulating a 4381, which is a mainframe, a mid-range mainframe, or lower mid-range mainframes from the 80s. I myself worked on some 4380s, touched some of those. Uh, they were perfect machines for VM370 back then, or VMSP. Um, people loved them for running VM, and so CPU busy is just three percent. We're running a whole. An MVS operating system and the CPU idle is 97%. And uh, we can see this here updating. Yeah, we, we should see this updating here as I press enter. This will update. Yeah, as you can see here. So, uh, yeah, this, this machine is not busy at all. This virtual, this VM370 can run another four or five of those. And memory is still, still plenty of memory. Page rate is a little bit high, 322 pages per second, but it manages just fine. They can try to run a COBOL program. Yeah, let's run a program, COBOL program. Yeah, the only thing that kind of sticks out is the page rate is very high, 320 pages per second. That's kind of, it's kind of on the high side, but machine still manages just fine. Um, no problems uh, whatsoever. So let's go check the output from this COBOL job. It's down here. Let's purge all this output. Uh, and here it is. So it ran this uh, in about half a second. So you can see here the COBOL compiler from May 1972. That's a 46 year old compiler right there, <laughs> running on a modern mainframe, uh, running at a university at a research institution. Beautiful. One more thing we could have a look at is what, you know, how this looks like from the Linux, from the underlying Linux uh, point of view. Um, so we can run an htop. Obviously, there's other stuff running on this Linux instance on, on the mainframe. Um, 
see here there's a Java virtual machine running. I know what it is, but I'm not going to say it. Maybe some of you who have been paying very close attention to this video will, will, will be able to tell me what it is that's running there by posting uh, below in the comment section below this video. But um, this looks like this machine is really not busy at all. I mean, look at this. Um, Oracle is just using 4% CPU and uh, if there's anything that's using more CPU or a little bit of, of, of uh, stressing the system just a tiny little bit, it's probably more this Java virtual machine. Um, I'm not a big fan of Java. Um, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, go against people who like uh, this uh, this uh, programming language and environment. But uh, Java is just a mess. I mean, I I can't understand how people uh, like writing in this programming language and uh, command lines that last for go for like 200 characters just to start an environment. Uh, Etc. It's it's not elegant. I don't I don't think it's very elegant. But anyway, this is not about Java. This is about uh, this mainframe here running it. Um, and uh, I have no way really of measuring the overhead of this virt of her of this Linux instance inside the ZVM here um, at this layer. We can measure the Hercules overhead at this layer. We can measure we can measure this overhead here with uh, with this terminal, right? You can measure the VM three seventy overhead, and then we can look at uh, IMON inside inside MBS to measure this overhead. Uh, I'm not able to see anything below here because I don't have the privileges to see to have any performance monitoring for for the stack uh, going up here uh, or from here up. Um, so I, uh, there's also a way to look at uh, the whole overhead of the whole machine um, for all the partitions, and I don't have access to that either. Um, Maybe I will one day get access to all of that. Um, we're, it's it's in the works, um, but I don't want to say more than that. So, uh, uh, so but uh, this is what we can see, right? And uh, this machine is not busy at all. And in fact, from the Linux point of view, <laughs> this Hercules just to, using a tiny little bit of memory, 16 megabytes of memory. That's really just nothing, right? And look at all the other stuff. Uh, Java uses a multiple of that, so. Uh, you know, this is this is no, this is nothing to this Linux instance, and this is nothing to the mainframe. So uh, why would this be any stress at all? Uh, it isn't, and uh, and uh, so I'll keep this running for a while um, and keep using this system. Why not? I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> it's the elegant thing to do to use uh, VM three seventy and MES on a real mainframe. And so I don't know what else to show other than just my amazement my amusement and my joy for uh, getting all this uh, to run. I, I really didn't do anything special. I just copied software over and started stuff. Uh, all the, all the, all the uh, praise goes to the people who wrote all this amazing software. Amazing. So um, if, if you like this video and if you like what, what you've seen here, if you appreciate the historical importance of this, please do press on the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, I urge you to uh, post them in the comments below this video. If you haven't subscribed to the Moshex Mainframe channel yet, then this is a good time to do it. Thank you for watching and goodbye.